All right, so now let's move on to rigging the mouth. So for speech in animation, we use a mouth chart. To rig the mouth, we have to go by a standard mouth chart for animation. There's a lot of different animation books and references where you can get mouth charts, but I'm just gonna go with the old standby cartoon animation book by Preston Blair. It's still pretty relevant, and a lot of schools actually still use it. Animator Survival Kit by Richard Williams. He also has mouth charts in there that you could look at, just for reference. So what we're gonna do is just create a new layer, and we're gonna bring the reference in. So I'm gonna create a new layer right at the top, just call it temp, because I'm gonna delete this after. So if you download the Preston Blair mouse that's provided to you for this course, you can just download it into your folder here. Once you have this temp layer created and selected, you can just grab that file and drag it right over top of your Flash interface and release, and it'll come right onto your stage and right into that, that layer that you had selected. So let's just bring it over and we can use our free transform tool, Q on the keyboard, and just scale it down. I'm holding shift and just move it to the side here. We're just gonna use it for reference for now. Actually, let's stick it over here and position ourselves and we'll zoom in just to encompass all of that. All right, so we'll create a new layer and we'll just call it mouth. Put the mouth layer right at the top because I want it to be over top of everything. All right, so let's create our default mouth first and then the rest of the mouths will kind of uh, follow that shape. So I'm just gonna turn everything off. We'll uncheck our mouth layer so we can see the mouth. So I'm just gonna draw the mouth in first with our line tool. This is his default mouth here. So we'll just lock that in and then bend it into shape. Make sure your snap to objects is on when you're creating any of these lines so that your points are snapped together and then turn it off to bend it back. So just turn everything back on and have a look. Okay, and what you can do for the mouth, it's always nice to thin the line out a little bit. So I'll just select this whole thing. We can double click on it. And let's bring that down. I had it set to, to three for the eyebrows, but I'm gonna maybe set it back down to two. Just, we can just go in the properties area and just type two under, next to where it says stroke. Enter that with the line selected. And we'll bring it back down to a line thickness of two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a series of happy mouths, and then we're gonna create a series of sad mouths. So we'll do the happy mouths first. So the basic mouths, we're gonna do three variations of an open mouth so that we can smoothly animate the mouth opening. And then we're gonna do an E. We're gonna do something like this one here so we can get OO sounds. The closed mouth can be just this default mouth and that's for MB and P sounds. And then we need an L mouth with the tongue up and one with the bottom lip tucked into the teeth and those are for F and V sounds. So the first thing we need to do is create a symbol out of the mouth. So we'll select the whole mouth, hit F8. We'll just call this mouth for now. We might have to probably need to rename it later for three quarter mouth. So we'll double click to get inside the mouth and we're gonna do the same process as we went through with the eyes and the eyebrows. We're gonna create new shapes on each frame. This line here is gonna end up being the top lip when the mouth starts to open. So I wanna keep that line here on the second frame. So I'm just gonna copy the, the original one. Let's copy it and we'll paste it on frame two. Okay, so let's go to frame two and we're gonna create our next mouth. So we'll just use our line tool, turn your snap on so we can snap the corner. So this one's just gonna be slightly opened. Then we'll copy this mouth to frame three and we'll make this one open a little more. Okay, so I do wanna exaggerate this mouth shape. I wanna get it open quite a bit. So you can see it's going past the bottom of his face here. So what we'll do is we'll give him a bit of a bottom lip on this one. Okay, so if we scrub over those. Okay, so the next one we'll do is E shape. So we'll just go to the original mouth. Let's copy the original mouth over to the end and paste it. And we'll use that to create a mouth shape where he can be making E sounds. So for that, we're gonna stretch his mouth out a little bit. And I'm just using this as a reference. All right, so we're just sort of blocking these in. Let's go to the next one. We'll do an U shape. So for this one, I think I'm just gonna hit F7 on my keyboard and create a blank keyframe. And we'll just do this one from scratch because it's very different from the rest. We could just do a circle for that and we'll just delete the fill. I think I'm gonna create an R shape as well. And let's actually copy this circle. Maybe we can get it from here. So we'll copy frames and we'll paste it on the next frame. So I wanna get something that's sort of squeezed at the end. So let's see if we can get that. I can use my eraser tool just to break that line. And I'll turn my snap to objects on so I can reconnect these over here. We have something like this for R. It says U here, but I like to think of it as R shapes. And so we need something with the tongue up. I don't have a tongue with him yet, but we will use one of the open mouths. Put a, an, a tongue in here. 
and we need something for the F and V sounds. Now he doesn't have teeth. You can get it without teeth by just closing the mouth and putting some wrinkle lines in like, like we have here in the skin, just so that the, it looks like the bottom lip is tucked in. Now I haven't really decided if I'm gonna give this guy teeth or not. I think we can keep him relatively simple and just avoid teeth altogether, but we will give him a tongue. All right, so let's actually start filling in some of these mouth shapes. So I'm just gonna choose a dark red color to fill the mouth. We can change it later right now. It's just sort of a stand-in fill and we'll just fill that. We'll just go through and fill any of the open mouths that we have open here. And I should fill in this lip. So we'll do the same thing as we did with the body parts where we'll just put a line there and it should match his skin color. But for now, we'll just, we use this gray color. So we'll fill that in and then get rid of these lines. Okay, so now we gotta give him a tongue. So I think I'm gonna do this on a different layer, just in case we wanna adjust some of the mouths later. We don't have the tongue as part of the artwork, so we'll do the tongue separately. So on frame one, obviously it's a standard mouth. We don't have a tongue here, but we'll hit F7 to create a blank keyframe on frame two, where we will need a tongue. And I'm just gonna draw something in here. And we'll do the next one. So make sure you set a key on the next frame. And we already have that artwork there, so we'll just bring it down. So we have two keyframes here. So I'm just gonna set another keyframe and we'll just bring it up. And then for this one, we'll set a blank keyframe here because we don't need it here. So F7, set a blank keyframe and it disappears. And then on the very last one, we don't need it there either. So we can just hold that blank keyframe. Let's fill in those tongues. So let's just hide the mouth for a moment. So we're gonna have to fill this tongue in. Now let's do the next one. We'll just hide the mouth for a minute. Okay, and we'll do this last one. Okay, so we got these tongues done. Okay, so let's do the, the last mouth where we have an F shape sound. So what we can do is just use the default mouth. I'm gonna copy that to the end. Let's paste it. Because you're tucking your bottom lip into your upper lip, you're, you do tend to lift your upper lip up a little bit. So we'll lift his upper lip and we'll just create a couple of rounded lines to indicate um, a bulge in the skin. And we'll just create one little rounded line and then we'll just duplicate it. So I think what I'm gonna do is erase some of the middle here and just keep the edges. Just using this as a reference. You see how the, we have a, the, the, the original lines here? And then in the middle we have a couple of skin bulges. So I'll keep these, these lines on the end and then I'll make a couple of these skin bulges. I'll just control D on your keyboard to duplicate and we can scale them. So let's double click to get back out and see what it looks like from the outside. <laughs> All right, so we don't have enough frames here. Our mouth goes up to frame seven. So let's double click to get back out and we'll just bring it all the way up to frame 10 just to make sure we and we'll insert frames. All right, so we can see all the mouth shapes looping away and we can see that open mouth. We put that lip, that bottom lip in and that's working out okay. So that's pretty much it for rigging the face. For more realistic stylizations of a character, realistic designs, sometimes they want the jaw to actually move with the mouth as the mouth opens. So I'll, I'll just quickly go over how to do that. If we go inside the head. Right now, as this character stands, we just have the mouth as a symbol here. And I'll just bring it over the side and we just have the mouth as an independent symbol with animation inside of it. So if you wanna have the jaw opening with the mouth, you actually have to cut the head in half. So I'm gonna select the entire head on the head art layer here. So I'm gonna use the lasso tool and the polygon tool just so that I can select a section between, right between his mouth and his eyes. And we're just gonna go around and connect that. If you select the mouth by accident, just hold shift down and select the mouth to deselect it. You just wanna right click and cut. So double click to get inside the mouth and we'll create a new layer. I want this layer to be at the very bottom so that the mouth shapes are on top of this artwork. And we're just gonna go right click in the stage here and paste in place. Sometimes it doesn't really paste it in place as you want it to, but you can just shift it back into position. So if we double click to get back out, you can see that the head still appears to be intact. And now this bottom half of the face is part of the, the mouth symbol. 
So I'll double click to get back inside the mouth and now we have this jaw. So I'm going to go to the first open mouth and we can see here that we have one keyframe but we have it going all the way up to frame 7 so it's going to, if I just drag over that you can see that jaw just holds. So what we'll do is we'll create a keyframe on frame 2 and the mouth just pops open a little bit. Just F6 to create a keyframe. We're going to use our free transform tool. We're going to scale it down but we don't want it to scale up as well at the top. So what we're going to do is just set our pivot point to where the jaw would hinge somewhere over here. It's going to mess up our paint a little bit, but we can easily go back and fix that in a, few, in a few minutes. So right where the mouth open a little bit, we'll just pop it open a little bit. And we really want to be looking at the bottom line here. I know this is going to break, but we can fix that in a few minutes. So let's just scrub over those two. And you can see the jaw opening a little bit with the mouth. Now let's go to the next one, F6 on the keyboard. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just move the pivot point over to where the jaw would hinge. And let's get it down a little further. We can bring that one right down. So it encompasses the lip as well. We don't really, because we're doing it this way, I would probably get rid of that, that lip line. I only put it in there because the mouth went off the face before. And for this one, it can really just go back to the original. So I'll copy the original one and paste it on the next keyframe for the jaw layer. So because the mouth is open a little bit here, so we'll just open that one maybe a little bit. We'll just bring it up a little bit for this one. Set a key first and then move the pivot point and then scale your, your jaw. So, so far we have this. So I'll set a key for this one, and maybe I'll just bring the jaw open a tiny bit. And the last one, we'll bring the jaw up for this one, so we'll set a key, move the pivot point, make the adjustment. Okay, so I'm just going to go through each one now and just fix the fill, and very quickly just bring it up. It can overlap the fill from the, the top of the head, it's not really a big deal, it won't be seen anyways. Let's just keep the mouth hidden for all of these and we can just go through and fix this. So I just had a little bit of an issue with the line coming apart on the face here, so I'm just reconnecting it. And we'll just bring that fill over top. If you're having problems with the line work, you can always use the sub selection tool, A on the keyboard, or it's the second arrow on the toolbar there. So you can see that we have two points on this line. I want to delete this one. Okay, so we went through and fixed all the little the jaws there. So we'll turn the mouth back on. And I'm just going to get rid of that lip line that we had on the, the, the open mouth. I don't really need that anymore. So let's double click to get back out and let's check that out now. Set the mouth now to play once just so we can see all the mouths. Okay, so I can see I got a little sliver of blank space there so I'll go in and fix that one. It's not a big deal, you just grab the edge of the paint and bring it up. Those are just minor tweaks that you'll have to do sometimes. So I'll just go through all of them and check them and it looks pretty good. Okay, so we can just delete this temp layer now. I'm just going to select it, hit the trash can, get rid of it. We don't need that there anymore. All right, so there's two different ways that flash smells are usually rigged. If it's a real cartoony stylization like this character where he's just sort of exaggerated and very cartoony and nothing close to, to realistic, you can very easily get away with, with just having the mouth animating on the spot without any jaw movement. But, you know, you can also use the jaw movement for a cartoony character as well. It just isn't as necessary as a more realistically designed character. It just depends on the proportions of the character's face. It also just depends on your preference. So that's pretty much it for facial animation. I'm just going to go inside the head. So the animators would basically just animate two eyebrows, pupils, and the mouth. Also to the eye. And these are the layers that the animators would set keys on to do the facial animation. And right now we have everything set to loop or play once. When you're finished rigging, oftentimes I'll just leave it on loop because the animators know to change the symbols back to play once or back to single frame most of the time and animate away. But I'll leave it on loop just so they can scrub through and see all the expressions and shapes that we've included that are available to them before they start animating and then they can just set the symbols from loop to single frame and then begin their animation.